And I found increasingly, uh, if you introduced a course, and you said, now, Jensen and Lynn and, let's say, Ising, believe that there is a genetic gap between black and white. I happen to disagree, but I only disagree because I've confronted their arguments and marshaled evidence. You found people essentially saying to even discuss the issue that black and white might differ in genes for intelligence shows you're a racist. And out of deference to black students who might feel offended, we have every right to purge your books, perhaps put them in a special section of the library with a sign that says, you know, the books here are dangerous books. Maybe you need what? To take an oath to look at them. They didn't want any courses on it. Well, I particularly took a trip in America in about 2006. Mm. And that was to promote a book with Cambridge. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find any university that taught a course on intelligence. And I said, why is that? And in code it came through, well, if you teach a course on intelligence, some kid in the back of the room is likely to raise his hand and say, is there a genetic gap between black and white? And then you're crucified. If you say yes, you'll be lynched. If you say no you will end up by saying something like black subculture is such that there is less intense pressure for economic development and that the reasons that there is this IQ gap are environmental. But then you're going to be crucified as a racist because you're blaming the victim. You're saying, oh, black subculture doesn't bring as strong an emphasis on academic or cognitive achievement is white. Uh, every black, uh, what, what, what's in the wings? Are you going to say that blacks use corporal punishment more? Now, you see, I'm an ethnic historian, and I know fully well as an Irish American that Irish subculture in America did not have the same pressure towards cognitive achievement as, let's say, Jewish or East Asian subculture. Hmm. That is, the Irish came to America with no educational tradition. Uh, They had been forbidden to go to schools if they were Catholics. They came from farms where all you could do was spade potatoes over twice a year, so they had no agricultural skills. They had plenty of cheap potato whiskey, and therefore a tradition of alcoholism. And, of course, the outlaw was admired because he was against the British crown. When Chinese came to America, they had a tradition that the brightest kid became a Mandarin and favored his village. They farmed, they spun silk, they were engaged in a money economy, and they didn't have a problem of alcoholism. And who do you think was going to go up the ladder faster when they came to America? A group whose subculture did not emphasize hard work, did not emphasize schooling, uh, are a group that worked like spit and had always identified social advancement with educational advancement. And, of course, the Chinese, although they were poor and when they arrived, they went, went up much quicker than the Irish. If you go into a Chinese restaurant, you'll often see a kid asleep over his books, and then he'll wake up, shake his head, and start reading again. You don't see that in an Irish steakhouse. That is, uh, there's a different, a subcultural difference. And of course, as an older boy, I knew there were subcultural differences. If you've ever served at a funeral in uh, an Italian home, it's very different than in an Irish home. You have to restrain the Irish widow from, she's off in a corner. Usually other people are off at other places arguing politics. In the Italian case, you have to keep the widow from throwing herself into the grave to join her husband. There are all sorts of subcultural differences between American Irish, American Chinese, American Jews. The head of the American Psychological Association, once Anthropological Association, once said that although his parents were poor and humble people, The first thing they did was to subscribe to the New York Times, which they couldn't read but wanted him to read. 
And in that household, if you made the football team, people would say, are you crazy? What if you get a head injury and can't go to medical school? In an Irish home, the greatest thing you could do was to make the football team. <laughs> and no one worried about the head injury. They just applauded you far more for making the football team than getting a good report card in arithmetic. So I thought, this is just insane. How can you ignore that there are subcultural differences between ethnic groups in America? And I compiled what I think is convincing evidence that the black subculture in America, for all sorts of historical and sociological reasons, doesn't put the same emphasis on cognitive achievement as, let's say, Chinese or Jewish subculture. Thanks for watching. If you want to see the whole interview, just follow the link up here or down below. And please subscribe for more outrageous clips from my interviews. Thank you. Have a good one. Cheers.